they are done with the hustles of medical school. <laughs> God, why not? I found out that our lecture notes were more helpful than the um, highly acclaimed STEM teachers in ONG. Like when you go to the clinics, there are some things that the lecturers can tell you that they can ask or can give you as an assignment. Please don't joke with those assignments. With can Whatever they tell you in clinic, make sure you take note of every single thing because it can be a question. Well, some people find it easy to just go up and clap patients. There are some of us. We have to cycle, cycle up ourselves, you know. I can relate. <laughs> and then you read the topic. Don't just read it in the lecture. You know, maybe browse online about it, maybe on Medscape, or also read the textbook about it because they didn't really limit themselves to everything. But Hello, everyone. You're welcome back to my channel. It talks with Ogo here with you today. On today's video, you can see two guests on my channel. You know me and guests, Tomo. I don't know if I can do any other thing without guests in my channel. Just get used to it, you guys. So, you guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to pass pediatrics and O and G. Pediatrics is a course done in the 500 level medical student of Nigerian student. Though. I don't know for how to abroad or something, but in Nigeria, it's, it's a 500, sorry, yeah, it's 500 level medical student exam. It's a fourth MBBS exam okay so my right here is she introduced herself but you should know that i have i heard this fire fire like you know distinction candidates and here too distinction candidates so you guys so just get popcorn or me get your pen and jota and make sure you write every single thing they're going to say here and make sure you apply don't just listen and enjoy the moment without you applying it to your life and me too i'm in that class i'm in fourth and so i need help <laughs> I want to pass to as well so you guys make sure you guys subscribe to my channel very important okay subscribe to my channel like and comment and share to your friends anybody that would need the advice it's, it mustn't be a student of UNN it might be in Nigerians or a medical student that will need the help to listen and learn how to do well in your MP that is an O and G so without further ado I would like them to do, introduce themselves yes I forgot who am I to say this like how can I forget that these are doctors they are doctors you guys like they are done with the hurdles of medical school <laughs> god why not <laughs> anyways please let me allow you guys to know who they are let them introduce themselves to you guys okay so all right okay I'm Anasi Bebe and I'm a graduate from the University of Nigeria and Soka yes and you okay I'm Okunko Kinechiku Juda I'm a graduate from the University of Nigeria and Soka I'm glad to be on this channel yes they are glad, definitely glad to give you all the things in your brain so that you can learn and be good. <laughs> all right, so let's move to the next part of the video, the main part of the video. What materials or textbook do you use to pass, like, do any, like to pass in medical school in pediatrics and ONG? What are the textbooks you use? And, yeah. Okay, for my obstetrics and gynecology, I used um, 10 teachers. And for my pediatrics, I used 99 authors. And then I also read the materials, especially for ONG. The materials were very, very, very important. It was even pediatrics. Yeah. And then I also read part of Abuala for ONG, but I stopped halfway and then continued extensively. In I continued using M10 teachers more. Okay, 10 teachers more. Okay, 10 teachers test book back. Yes. Okay. You? Okay, so for me, um, for obstetrics and gynecology, um, I focused more on um, our lecture notes. Okay, not that I focused more on our lecture notes. I read 10 teachers, I read our lecture notes, but I found out that our lecture notes were more helpful than the um, highly acclaimed 10 teachers in ONG. Are you guys listening? Copy your notes in classes. Make notes. Don't be for me that you remember. Make notes. Very important. Take notes. All okay, right. So, so that's why I mentioned the lecture notes first. They were more helpful for us or to me the exams than the 10 teachers but of course i also read the 10 teachers at some point i also consulted the a, a um obstetrics obstetrics textbook called um, comprehensive obstetrics i also consulted our teachers um That's 10 teachers now. No, our different textbook oh. by some lecturers in ebony state but anyway still like it's still um is more in line with what we do here it's more in, of a local textbook similar to abola uh -huh. okay. so that's our teachers and i also connected some i read some things there then for the oski and the ospi and um, there was a book called um guide to history taking in oski i didn't really use it that much but i feel it to be helpful 
the guy to issue taken in Oski. And then there was a procedure book by um, the current HOD, um, Tukemika UK, and some other lecturers. So that book was really helpful because in the exam they asked some questions about some procedures like um, insertion of the implants, um, implant on implants was there, and some other procedures. So that book was also helpful. Then for pediatrics, of course, um, lecture notes were also very helpful. I think I read, uh, m much of my reading was on lecture notes. I also consulted the Azubi Kepes book. Um, which, which is also known as 99 authors um, for some particular topics. Um, then, made for OSPI, um, OSPI, what I use for us, um, the OSP, past OSPI materials, the past OSPI pictures, but the point was that they didn't repeat questions, they didn't repeat questions much. So how we studied for OSPI was that as we see the picture, read about that picture in Medscape. So there was a lot of things, a lot of questions they were asking were coming from Medscape. So yeah. that was what helped us. Medscape, you see the picture, answer the question on the table. Apart from that, you go to Medscape and answer and read about, read everything around that topic. So that anywhere they want to come from, uh, they can, you can um, have a good grasp of that picture. Then, uh, then chair posting notes were also helpful because there are some topics they should ask emergency, emergency topics in the essay. Okay. So just pay attention, when you are doing your chair posting, pay attention, try and take notes. Even though there are some lecturers that don't like you taking notes, I think Ibuki doesn't like taking notes. Kitsu is not in yeah. ENTH school. <laughs> so for those that are not in ENTH, yes, well, you will not relate. <laughs> it's not so relevant for you. Mm. But we have a posting called chair posting. So, That's um, children emergency. Children emergency, children emergency posting. Yeah. So the notes there. In fact, some people have to take voice recordings that some of us listen to before the exam. So those are some of the materials that helped out in the, um, the ONG and pediatrics for me. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then, um, don't joke with your posting notes. I forgot to say that one. It's very, very important. As, and also those things that, like when you go to the clinics, there are some things that the lecturers can tell you that they can ask or can give you as an assignment. Please don't joke with those assignments. So it can come out either um, your MCQ questions, your MCQ or your essay. Because I remember the P1, our P1, the first um, test we had for pediatrics, I was in endocrinology unit and then one of the consultants gave us an assignment concern related to hemolytic uremic syndrome that we should read about it extensively and then surprisingly i saw it as one of the questions in our mcq um, the mcq they gave us for the p1 and they did not teach it because they don't limit themselves to the p1 topics you get uh, they also even asked us even the chair questions in p1 they asked us um uh, this resuscitation like the sequence if you see a b a b c you get so practically you can't limit yourself to a particular a particular, like they say P1 test, you not limit yourself to P1 test or P2 test, you not limit yourself to P2 test, but they can ask anything. So whatever they tell you in clinic, make sure you take note of every single thing because it can be a question. Get. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Ibubi and Dr. Judah. You want to say anything? Yes. Okay, and then the book that um, um, Judah mentioned, that's um, Professor UK's book, um, that, uh, he talked about it for OSCE. I also found out, but I found out late, Thank God. that yeah. they were... <laughs> There were pictures there that came out in our OSPI. But it, I found out late about it, so I was not able, I was just regretting why I did not look at the book. Okay, okay the so book came please out don't late. be finding uh, out that book like very so Know it on time. Yeah. Early to bed, early to rise. All right, so next question. Thank you very much. Question is, um, what were the challenges you faced while studying for this exam? Because, because you know, now we've heard that the pediatrics are pediatrics specifically. That's where they have more receipts and most of the time, after, even after the receipt itself, you might not even still pass the receipt. So like, what, what do you think were the challenges that you could face so that you, or you faced and you wish that um, you knew how to handle it or something, or you handled it at the end of the day? So the challenges you faced while studying for the exam. So who, who wants to say first? Okay. Okay, so um, challenges I faced while preparing for the exam. Mm, okay. Like for example, in pediatrics, um, one challenge I had to overcome was the inertia to clack, like that resistance. You know, sometimes some people, some people find it easy to just go up and clack patients. Some of us, we have to cycle, cycle up ourselves, you know. I can relate. <laughs> and and tell ourselves we must clack this clacking now. Finally, pick up courage and go and clack. So that was one of the challenges I had, but I, I believe I was able to, to some extent to overcome that. So because clacking. In pediatrics, clacking, examining, and presenting is very important for that exam. It's extremely important. So that was one of the challenges I faced. Uh, what other challenges I faced was that um, 
they didn't limit themselves, especially for pediatrics, to what was taught in the materials in the course outline. They wow. went above what, what was taught. So wow. that was an, another challenge. Well, I would I say that maybe a way to minimize the effect of that is that maybe when you read a topic, don't just read it in the lecture, maybe browse online about it, maybe on Medscape, also read the textbook about it because they didn't really limit themselves to everything, but just be consistent in your studies and no matter how, how you still do well. Then the ch challenge is still on challenges, O and G exam, well, the OSCE was surprising on the first day and there are some, uh, some questions they asked that were not so clear. There's a, there was a station on pathograph, so the questions were not, sh clear, not so clear initially, but at some point the lecturer had to give us hints. You know, then I was not able to answer that. Then the history taking station. There was an history taking station. Then there was a post encounter station. So um, I couldn't really understand the questions. The, maybe I was not primed to face a post encounter station. So after taking the issue, then going to the post encounter, it was now somehow big. So when you're, when you're praying for that exam, just have it in mind that for every issue you take, there will be a post encounter station. So what is the meaning of post encounter okay, station? Okay, post encounter station is that because normally we are used to that. And um, OSCE, you just go and ask patients, start firing questions, firing questions, firing questions, and the patient will give you the answer. In fact, initially, what we were thinking was that the, the patient doesn't even need to answer. You just ask the question of the marking scheme, and they will get your marks. But yeah. no, the patient have to have to answer you. Then you have to remember the responses of the patients mm. because in the next station, they cannot ask you. From the from the history gotten from the patient, what was your most likely diagnosis? Can ask you um, what is the investigations you how you investigate these patients, how you treat these patients. So just have that in mind. Um, so apart from that, um, the other challenge was that well, well it was stressful, but then there's yeah, something that isn't stressful. Yeah, medical scary <laughs> be stressful, so you know. That's just that's um, to make the stress a little too easy and not as if they will not be stressed. They will still be stressed anyway. So. Okay, <laughs> the challenge I had in pediatric, I think I had more challenges in pediatrics than ONG because pediatrics is very That's much distinction. <laughs> <laughs> pediatrics is very extensive. At least ONG, you know that cervical cancer, ovarian cancer, infertility, postpartum hemorrhage, you already know that it's streamlined, unlike pediatrics. So it was really hard in terms of clerking because you can click a case now and you'll be very good at you'll be granted in this case and then you now all of a sudden maybe today you now click a case you've never seen before in your life for pediatrics you get on that day like maybe on that day or maybe normal postings normal post and all that day. so sometimes my clerk and during clinic and days were horrible <laughs> sometimes they were good because i had clerked that similar case okay, so cool. yeah so pediatric well pediatric and um, posting was like the, the topics were very much extensive for me so I had challenges with clerking at first but I had to keep on doing it because I just I I forgot about the shame of maybe anybody laughing at me I just clerked anyhow if, yeah. if, even if they had ahead it was a challenge for me but I kept on trying my best and all that so it was very extensive also the other challenge I had for pediatrics was the MCQ Jesus Christ the MCQ <laughs> the MCQ is wonderful Many lines, there are a lot of, like, they write a, a long clinical scenario, especially for our main. That was a big challenge with limited time and all that. So that was, those were the two challenges I had for pediatrics. Okay, I also had another challenge, but I was, I was um, the, they shocked us, we were shocked mm -hmm. by our OSPI. Okay, they brought questions that we did not expect. That was for the mock, I think, I think the mock, yes. So these were the three challenges I had. For O and G, Okay, the challenge I had was those baby catching days. It okay, was, it was really stressful. stressful. Yes. It was really, really stressful. We had to really push. We had to sleep um, in the hospital in order to fill in yeah. the gaps. Like for them baby per person that you will catch? Mm -hmm. What is it? 20? 25. 25, yes. I think five for you trying your hands on something. Trying five to remove special, cancer. Five special cases. I had five special cases. Maybe twins or... What in other ones? Mm -hmm. But five special cases and then twenty that you just observe and then you sign. And then, so it was very stressful. It was stressful. So twenty was really much like for to get twenty babies. No, it was not that stressful, stressful for, for me, but it was still stressful because what well, the reason why it was not stressful like um some people that went to another um hospital was that I, I was posted to a suit. So okay. a suit they had children. Okay. Around, like yeah. they had pregnant women coming around yeah. that. So it was period. easier. It was easier but still stressful. Of I course. Still had to sleep. Of course. Yeah. So that was one of the areas that I found 
uh, challenging. challenging. And then that area was um, um, during our OSPI. <laughs> we were so shocked. <laughs> they brought out questions that even some of the um, examiners, some of the consultants were like Surprised. shocked yes, by the questions hey. that were brought out. I think and it, it was, was the HOD that said it. It was the HOD that said it. Yes. Hey. So you have to just make sure that your, your eyes are very much open during postings because they might just snap anything during surgery. Snap anything and just keep it. Like I remember my O and G one. So I'm sorry, this is not the question you asked me. Yeah. But my O and G one, the um, one of the consultants snapped um um ureter catheter, ureter catheter being tied around the uterus and told us that they can if you see this kind of picture, they just know that it's related to myomectomy. Shelly, yeah. So it was one of the things they brought out then you get ahead. So just you have to keep your eyes open. But still, even if you keep your eyes open, still prepare your mind though. That because you might still, you know, still, 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 still be shocked because we saw for, when we even check let her check some questions that we even saw in that house, we found out that they were brought up from the net, some of them and then some from that book. So, you get, so that which was book, which book that's um from the UK. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so the cause of time. Um, so um, that that was the challenging part of. But the OSCE, the OSCE was okay. The only part I had problem with was the first history stand when they asked us history of spotting. Like my mind, like my brain was still trying to comprehend what they asked to get ahead. So that was the part that was difficult for me during the OSCE. But aside that, it was fine. Okay. Thank you very much for your answer.